Good day, dear friends. Today we're going to look at the Holy Spirit in the Old and in the New Testament, and we're going to see the exciting scriptures where it talks about the Holy Spirit and where we see uh, His person being revealed. We're also going to look at why did He come and all those exciting things, uh, especially the fact that you and I were nef not left alone. But uh, Jesus said that He, when He goes, He will send somebody else, the Parakletos, the one that will stand alongside us and be with us into all eternity. So welcome to the session. Um, looking forward to sharing God's word with you. So very interesting is that we read uh, that in the book of Genesis, we read that the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Interestingly, it says, and the Lord came, said, behold, the people is one and they all have one language. And this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to let us go down. And there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So very interesting here is we see the word let us. So God actually reveals himself here as three in one. And he reveals the fact that he says, let us go down and conf confound their language. Very fascinating. One of the best scriptures in the Old Testament also to really show to us that God, even though God is one, he's also three. So here we see then this, this, this um, statement, let us go down and confuse their language. Fascinating uh, that the earth was of one language and that the languages then were then confused. Interesting is that Jesus speaks in, in Mark chapter 16 verse 15 and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Fascinating here is that we see, you know, these shall we say, signs that will, will follow believers. And it's very clear that they are clear signs. It meaning that, yeah, when we are believers, we don't just serve the Lord like this. There's going to be signs following us. And we're going to see some of this also as we continue having to do with the Holy Spirit. So interestingly here is, it says, after the Lord had spoken these things, he was received up into heaven. So this is while Jesus was still on the earth. Then it's interesting we have Jesus' teachings on the Holy Spirit. Beautiful is that Jesus says in John chapter 4 verse 17, I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter or the parakletos or the one that will be alongside or be with us in that sense that he may abide with you forever forever now friends is that not excellent is that not the greatest news you've ever had that the holy spirit will stay with us will will, will abide with us forever he will not leave you he will not forsake you he he'll, he'll be with you um, he'll be your comforter and how amazing that in this world we can have that knowledge that the Holy Spirit is going to be with us forever. What a beautiful promise is that not for us to have? Absolutely. And so Jesus continues to teaching in his teaching on the Holy Spirit. He says, even the spirit of truth. And that is very, very interesting that the, the Lord has given us the spirit of truth. It means that the spirit of truth, he will continue to bring the truth to us. And I think especially today in, in, this, in this hour, you know, when there is so much confusion, 
there is so much yeah in this hour there's so much so many lies that's being told and and the lies seem to be almost yeah stronger than the truth in this time in which we're living but it's of course we know that is not the truth but he's he's called the spirit of truth meaning that the holy spirit will reveal truth and and continue to reveal truth to us if you need to know the truth about a subject ask the holy spirit he's 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 the spirit of truth as jesus speaks about him it says that the world cannot receive him and i think that's very very interesting because yeah the world cannot receive him because they have not yet received christ and it's only when we have received christ only when we've come to jesus only when we've received the you know christ as our savior is when the holy spirit can come to us and it's only then when when we can we can see uh, you know the fact that uh, the truth has been revealed to us by the spirit by the spirit of truth and the bible says that the world cannot receive him because they haven't received christ yet you know they haven't been cleansed by the blood because it sees him not neither knows him but you know him for he dwells with you and shall be in you and that's two beautiful concepts that we read about here is those two concepts of that he is going to be with us but he's also going to be in us that is a fascinating concept he will he'll be with us but he will also be in us and that is that is an amazing uh, concept you know that the holy spirit with us and in us nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient or good for you that i go away for if i do not go away the comforter will not come unto you but if i depart i will send him unto you friends notice that he's referred to as him the comforter and jesus says clearly that if he doesn't go away the comforter won't come to us so yeah so it's it's the the the, the fact that jesus went of course then he could uh, he could send the spirit and it's called the holy spirit because he is holy where did the holy spirit come from of course the holy spirit came from heaven from the father and when jesus ascended he could then ask or he can then send the spirit to us so interesting is that jesus says it's good for you that i go away for if i do not go away the comforter will not come to you that's a fascinating concept you know that if jesus didn't go away the comforter wouldn't come to us yeah um, so beautiful scriptures here and if you notice all the things that jesus calls the holy spirit the spirit of truth the one that will be with us the one will be in us uh the comforter um and he's, he's sent from god from this from jesus here Jesus speaks in the book of John. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is good or expedient for you that I go away. For I do, if I do not go away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of judgment and of righteousness. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged again here it talks about the comforter that will come to us and you know he will come and he will come and convince us of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and it's really interesting um i mean i don't know how many of you have ever tried to speak to people about christ and it's like they it seems like they don't get it seems like you know that then they they understand it then they don't understand it and 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 it's it's fascinating because it's only the holy spirit that can reveal to us 
that we need the Savior, that we need to be saved, that we need to give our life to Christ, that we need to repent. So it's the very He is involved, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit. He is involved in our very salvation because it was by the Spirit that we could see that we were lost and that Christ had died for us and that we could be saved, you know, by, by the Spirit. He revealed it to us. So interesting is that, that Jesus says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot hear them now. How about when he, the spirit of truth, is come? So that's a promise that he would come. He will guide you into all truth. So the Holy Spirit is your guide. He's my guide. He will guide me into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Very interesting scripture, you know, is that the Holy Spirit will not speak of himself. Meaning that everything that is in the scripture, the Holy Spirit will kind of, will repeat that. He will repeat of what he heard God say. And of course we know that God had spoken and he, had sp he has spoken in his word. And so the Holy Spirit was also the one that moved on people to write the scriptures. Um, and so beautifully as we see that, um, that it was the Holy Spirit, you know, that, that revealed the scriptures to the Old Testament prophets that is revealing to us today, that, that revealed to the original 12 apostles. It was, it was by the work of the Holy Spirit, you know, that those things were done absolutely and then we read this interesting verse he shall glorify me he shall glorify me meaning that wherever god is glorified the holy spirit will be involved in this and he will help us also to glorify so he is actively involved when we glorify god that's why we sense his presence when we worship because he comes and he joins, he helps us to worship. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath of mine. Therefore I said that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. You see, he will glorify Christ. He will take of what is Christ and show it to us. And he shall take of the Father and show it to us. So, so the Holy Spirit is, is the spirit of revelation. He's, he's the spirit of truth. That's why, you know, it says that he will take of the Father and reveal it to us. He will take of the Son and reveal it to us. He, he's, the, he's, the spirit of, he's, he is the spirit of revelation. So beautiful is that, as, as we said, that he is involved in worship. Jesus says, he shall glorify me. That is the beauty of this. He shall glorify me. So we can know that where, the, where Jesus is glorified, there the Holy Spirit will come. So interesting, we have this concept of the Holy Spirit upon us. And then we also have this concept of the Holy Spirit in us. Mostly in the Old Testament, we read that the Spirit came upon the people. And in the New Testament, you know, there's a lot of refer references of where the Spirit came to infill people or in us. So here is, look at this Old Testament scripture. And the Lord came down in a cloud and he spake unto Moses. This is Moses. And he took of the Spirit that was upon him and gave it to the 70 elders. And it came to pass when the Spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. As we said in the Old Testament, mostly it's referred to that the Spirit came upon them. Once again, here in 1 Samuel 16, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David, this, of, at the anointing of David, in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. You see, once again, the Spirit came upon David. David also prayed and he said, cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Yes, knowing that, that this is the, the Spirit upon people or with people as we read in the Old Testament. And then, of course, we read also that the Spirit is, is, um, 
in the New Testament mostly that the Spirit is in people. Also upon, but mostly in people. Exactly, absolutely. So the Holy Spirit upon us and then the Holy Spirit in us. And this is the Old Testament. Then we read in the New Testament, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And here is the beautiful Ephesian scripture, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. He that believes on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke of the Spirit, which they that believe on him would receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Interesting, uh, interesting folks. Uh, it talks about it shall be out of our belly, of our innermost being, rivers of living waters. What does that mean? The other day somebody, somebody asked me also, how do I know that which I'm hearing or that which I'm seeing is not coming from my spirit? How do I know it's from the Holy Spirit? Well, I cannot give something that amount of life as God can. It doesn't matter how excited we are about a certain something. I mean, I could, be, I could hear some good news um, and then I could be very excited about that. But living waters bubbling out of my innermost being? <laughs> you see, so when something is from God, it has that, that life to it that cannot be, we cannot get from anything else. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of life-giving waters. Yes, so this is where we have this uh, concept of, 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 of life-giving waters, you know, that will flow uh, from us. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit here. How amazing, isn't it? Here, once again, that was when the Spirit came upon David, as we've just said. But here in the New Testament, we have this. So the Spirit came four times in the book of Acts, four times and actually exactly like he came in chapter 2. Now, you know, often we think to ourselves, well, what a pity that I wasn't there in chapter 2. <laughs> I, I missed out on the original outpouring of the Spirit. But it's very fascinating because um, the other times... The Spirit came exactly like in chapter 2. Um, and this is, is actually four accounts of the Holy Spirit coming in the book of Acts. And we're going to read or we're going to see these four times. So the first time is in chapter 2, of course, the day of Pentecost. Then we have one year later in chapter 8. We have eight years later in chapter 10 in Caesarea. And then we have 23 years later in Ephesus in chapter 19. Let's look at each one of these occurrences when the Holy Spirit came. The first time, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And remember what Jesus says, it will become like rivers of life-giving water, of living water that will flow out. And began to speak with other tongues as he gave them utterance. This is the first occurrence. Of course, at this occasion, in chapter 2, the very first time that this happens, there was only Jewish believers. It's in Jerusalem, and the Spirit comes like Jesus had promised, but only to Jewish believers, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak in other tongues. You see, when something is filled... It's that overflow, and that overflow um, is often tongues. Uh, it can also be prophecy. Um, people feel just a boldness, um, you know, because they've experienced this, 
this yes this the, the the infilling of the holy spirit so that was the first time the second time when i when it comes is one year later in samaria now when the apostles which were at jerusalem heard that samaria had received the word of god they sent unto them peter and john who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the holy spirit for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. They received the Holy Spirit. So, of course, the Holy Spirit is involved in my salvation. And of course, I received the Holy Spirit. But you see, here is that infilling that filled with the Holy Spirit with the gushing forth of the living waters uh, how fascinating how amazing um, i think in the state that we are living oh we are in such need of living waters especially in this hour that we are living we we're we're in desperate need you know of joy we're we're in desperate need to have that experience of of yes being filled with the holy spirit with living waters gushing out our very very innermost being so so that was a, another occasion when the holy spirit then came the first time in chapter 2 the second time in chapter 8 they laid their hands that's also another way of to receive the holy spirit is through the laying on of hands then we have again 8 years later and this is in chapter 10. While Peter sp yet spoke these words, the Holy Spirit fell on them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. They magnified God. You see, they magnified God. They spoke in tongues and they magnified God. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's beautiful here because the word and the spirit goes together. And here Peter was preaching. He was preaching the word. And while he was preaching the word, the Holy Spirit came. So we must expect, you know, that where the word is preached, where Jesus is glorified, we must expect the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. We must expect the presence, we must expect the Holy Spirit to come and, and, to, uh, in, in, and to experience it and to experience the, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. So that was another time then when the Holy Spirit then came eight years later. Then we see the, the fourth time in the scriptures, uh, in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit came. And it's at Ephesus. It's 23 years later, after chapter 2. Uh, we read chapter 19 of Acts. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. So there had been people that had given their lives to Christ. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Spirit. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. And then Paul, then said Paul, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus and then the very next verse is absolutely beautiful it says and Paul laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit yeah they received the Holy Spirit and what did Jesus say of the Spirit it would out of our bellies would flow rivers of living waters and that he spoke concerning the spirit <laughs> so yes so so we need that this this uh, filling of the holy spirit 
Yeah, absolutely. Interesting, we ask ourselves today, why do we have tongues? What for, what does tongues serve for? Of course, it's one of the evidences of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, um, some people, you know, they, they, they have been filled with the Spirit, but tongues maybe hasn't yet come out of them but it is as we see the places where people were filled with the holy spirit we do see that there was speaking in tongues you know so it doesn't mean that if somebody doesn't speak in tongues that they're not filled with the holy spirit but i would say um for myself i asked god for almost six months before it actually happened but it did happen um yeah and just to continue asking the lord you know for it you know because yes absolutely then of course beautiful is if we see why we have tongues it it is so that we may speak supernaturally to god of course it is that we may magnify god that we may exalt the lord that may, you know because it says they spoke in tongues and magnified god that we may edify ourselves because the bible says he that speaks in tongues edifies himself it says that we may pray with the Spirit and not just only with our understanding. Yeah, that is amazing because, you know, you and I are spiritual beings. And so the Lord has given us a supernatural language even to, to pray in. Uh, yeah, so, 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 so that is also one of the reasons why the Lord gave it to us. Uh, it says that, that with the interpretation gift, we can edify the church. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, for, for those of you that have been in meetings where somebody has brought a message in tongues and it was then interpreted. Yeah, the, the supernatural encouragement that had come from that. And um, yeah, the, 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 the sign, you know, that, that follows. It's, 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 it's one of the signs and wonders, isn't it? Uh, tongues and, and the interpretation of tongues. And then we also see why the Lord gave us is, is also tongues is as a sign for the unbelievers is what the Bible talks about, um, what it's, what, why, why the Lord has given us tongues. So my friends, I hope that um, this has been beneficial to you. And um, I, I just want to pray also now that we will all experience this more, the, the flowing out of rivers of living waters because as jesus said this he spoke of the holy spirit that those would receive and and i just want to pray and ask god you know to continue to fill and to continue to fill us with the holy spirit and to continue to use us and that these encouragement will continue to follow and flow through us so father thank you for every person that has been watching this um, thank you for the fact that you said that you would not, not leave us alone and thank you that you said that you would send us the holy spirit and that he the comforter will be with us forever always and thank you for the spirit of truth that leads us in the truth and thank you lord that is this holy spirit this is the spirit of revelation that he will reveal things to us Thank you for that, Lord. And I, I just thank you for the increase of your Holy Spirit in our lives. And we praise you that we are not alone. And Jesus, that you have not left us alone when you return to heaven. We thank you for this in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. For those of you that wanted to uh, support my ministry, thank you so very much for those of you that do. And for those of you that wanted to have the details, um, there is my IBAN number for, the, for those of you that wanted to, to support uh, the ministry. Thank you so very much for, for, your, for your love and your support. Or for those of you that wanted to go via PayPal, thank you very, very much. Um, and then also for those of you in south africa that wanted to support here there is my south african bank account number uh thank you very very much for your for the blessing that you are some of you might want to write and that is the website and um 
yes you're most welcome if you have questions or testimony that you wanted to share please go ahead uh, there is the website for that so god bless you my friend i pray that out of you out of your innermost being rivers of life-giving water the holy spirit would flow from you and that you would experience close fellowship with the holy spirit and that the sound of his voice will be clear as a bell in your life god bless you and thank you so much for joining me